Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In the first part of this series, you learnt the standard workflow to set up the camera analysis and perform a 3D track. In this video, you'll pick up just after performing the first analysis and look into all the different refinements and validations to get the best 3D track. So you'll look at what information you get just after the analysis. Then look at refining the 3D track, hiding unwanted points, defining the ground plane, setting the center point of the 3D composite, and finally you'll check the point cloud for 3D accuracy. So we've just tracked the shot with the default camera analysis settings, and you're currently seeing the 2D trackers using the camera analysis media view. Now the camera analysis will tell you whether the calculation was successful or not. When the information box is green, you have a good track, and red when you don't. You are also told the set reference frame for the analysis, the number of anchor frames to estimate the 3D point's positioning, and finally the total number of points used across the entire shot for the analysis. So tons of data have already been produced during the initial analysis step. Let's start looking at the 3D tracking data to find any slipping or rogue tracking points. So switch to the camera analysis camera view and see if any tracking points are not behaving. If you notice any slippage, you can select a point or control select a region of points. You could also switch to the refine menu and decrease the threshold to remove the least confident tracking points. Click disable to ignore the selection and refine the analysis. Another way of identifying points that may not be good for the 3D track is to look at the camera analysis scene view. This shows you the 3D point cloud, and you can use Option to orbit it, Control Option to move back and forth, and Shift Option to move up, down, left, and right. Scrubbing the time bar, you can see the camera moving through the scene as well as the generated anchor points from the analysis. Now the 3D cloud constructs the shot in 3D space, and it's easy to see where the points don't sit correctly. For example, use the other viewport to display the camera view from the analysis. Now this part of the wall is not in the correct place according to the point cloud. There is no detail to lock onto a flat wall, so that area needs to be ignored as part of the refinement. So either in the point cloud or in the camera view, select all the points on the wall. If you're having trouble seeing the points, just go to the display menu and scale them up or change the colour. Once again, click disable, followed by refine. So that's the process of refining the camera analysis, and you can see the result in the camera view. Later on, you'll use some additional validation tools to confirm the 3D track. Now after you have completed any refinements, there may be some points in the point cloud that you just don't want to see. So select those points in either the camera view or scene view, and click disable. In the scene view, those points are hidden, allowing you to get closer to the other points within the point cloud. As long as you don't press refine, these hidden points won't affect the existing 3D track. If you look at the camera view, those points still exist, but they are darkened as an indication. To show those points in the point cloud again, select them in the camera view and press enable. Now the typical 3D track always starts with the camera being horizontal in 3D space, and the ground of the shot rotated towards the camera. This looks fine when viewing through a 3D camera. But in order to make compositing easier within a 3D track, it makes sense to define the ground and match the camera to the angle of the original shot. So using the point cloud, locate and select some points which will define the ground plane for the shot. 
you can use the camera view to double check your selection. Click Set Ground and the point cloud will reorientate with your selection being horizontal and the camera adjusted to match. From there you can manually reorientate the world if necessary and you can also scale the size of the scene if it's too small or too large. One other useful tool in the camera analysis refinements is choosing a specific point in the point cloud that will be absolute zero in 3D space. So you choose a point within the point cloud and click Set Origin. The entire point cloud shifts and this selected point is now at zero at X, Y and Z in the 3D scene. You can create a scene tracker axis if you wish but it is not necessary. Defining an origin simply means that any object you import into action is usually at the centre of the 3D scene and should be easy to find. One of the last steps before selecting and creating scene trackers is to do a validation of the 3D track. You need to ensure the point orientation is more or less correct and any point you use as scene trackers will stick with the 3D track. You can obviously do a bit of judging by scrubbing the time bar and closely looking at the points in the camera view. Or you can turn on test objects in the display menu. This creates a virtual 3D object in the scene and camera views. Simply by selecting the points you can determine the point orientation and more importantly whether the track is sticking with those points. Once you are happy with the selection you create the scene trackers and it should be ready to use in the Action 3D composite. Now I'll go ahead and import a 3D object, connect it to the scene tracker axis and it will snap to that point in 3D space. You can reorient the object if necessary and position it correctly using the 3D manipulator in object mode. In the next video you'll learn what to do when things get in the way during a 3D track. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel and click the bell to be notified for future videos. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. And thanks for watching.